When your bladder gets full of urine and you're unable to pass any of it, we call that urinary retention. Now if it happens suddenly and is therefore painful, then that's acute urinary retention. And if it builds up over a period of time and is therefore painless, then that's chronic urinary retention. Now everyone knows that the solution is to catheterise the patient to relieve the retention, but there are lots of questions that people usually ask. For example, when do I catheterise the patient? What are the causes of urinary retention and do I have to do any investigations? So I'm going to try and answer all of those questions for you today. Doctor, I've done a bladder scan on this patient and I'm a bit worried. Can you take a look? So what do you do? Well, the first thing is, was that bladder scan done immediately after the patient had passed urine? What's known as a post-void residual. If not, then it's probably meaningless because, well, most people can hold in their urine. The question is, are you able to pass that urine? So, as I said, unless it's a post-void residual, it's probably meaningless. The exception being if it's super high, so high that the average person would have trouble holding it in. So let's say you've got your post-void residual. How do you know whether to catheterise the patient? Well, the answer is, there is no answer. It's a clinical decision. The normal bladder volume in adults is three to 400 millilitres. But the thing you really want to know is, is the patient in pain? Do they have any suprapubic tenderness on examination? Is the bladder visibly distended, for example? If you have an elderly patient and their post void residual is 200 millilitres, but they can't pass urine and they're in a lot of pain down there, they're in retention until proven otherwise, you need to catheterise them. So you need to decide. It's a clinical decision. You've got the catheter in now. What next? Well, you've got to see how much the catheter is actually draining, what's known as the true residual. And the reason is, if that true residual is more than, say, a litre, then that patient was in chronic retention, which means there was some obstruction causing it. And you cannot remove that catheter until the obstruction is dealt with, usually by surgery. The next thing you do is check the renal profile, the use and ease. And that's because if they're in acute kidney injury, you need to treat it with IV fluids. And then finally, in the same vein, you need to do a fluid balance because some patients will paradoxically pass way more water than normal. Uh, it's called a post-obstructive diuresis and they can get really dehydrated because of it. So you might need to give them IV fluids. So that's that. Congratulations. You've diagnosed and fixed acute urinary retention. Now what? Well, you need to work out what was causing it in the first place and treat that. So what are the causes of urinary retention? Well, the most common cause in the adult male is prostatic enlargement, so I'm afraid you're going to have to do a digital rectal examination. Remember, if you don't put your finger in it, you'll put your foot in it. The other reason this is a good idea is because probably the second most common cause of retention is constipation. If you put your finger up there and you feel loads of hard stool in that rectum, put some suppositories up and the chances are you'll fix the problem. Once they've passed large amounts of stool, you can take out the catheter and it's probably fixed everything. Remember then, BPH and constipation. The most common cause of acute urinary retention in the adult female is a UTI. So make sure to send some of that urine to the lab for analysis. You can dip it if you want, but I probably wouldn't bother if they're over the age of 65 because it will probably be positive anyway and it won't tell you anything. I also wouldn't start antibiotics immediately unless you had some other signs of infection like a fever or pyuria. So those are the three most common causes of acute urinary retention, but there are some other rarer ones. For example, a pelvic mass, such as in pregnancy, so you can do a beta HCG to check that. Or they could have chordroquinus syndrome, so you might want to do a full neurological examination to rule that out. The other rare one to think about is a urethral stricture, but don't worry about that because you'll know soon enough once you try to put in the catheter and have trouble passing it. Now I know I said the three most common causes of acute urinary retention were BPH, constipation and infection, but actually if you're working on a surgical ward, the most common cause will be general anaesthetic. The key here is to wait and let the anaesthetic wear off. You've got to be patient. The exception is if the patient's in a lot of pain, then you'll want to catheterise them anyway. But if you wait, it usually just clears itself up and they'll pass urine eventually. There are lots of other medications which can also cause acute urinary retention. For example, there are medications designed to treat incontinence, such as solifenicin. By their very nature, uh, they can cause acute urinary retention if the effects are too great. So always review the medications. Right, you found the cause and you've treated it. Now you want to get that catheter out. You want to trial the patient without catheter, usually abbreviated to TWOC. So you've got two options here really. If you think the patient's going to be in hospital for a while yet, you can just keep the catheter in and then when you think they're ready, TWOC them in hospital and see if it works. 
If you don't want to keep the patient in hospital and you think they can go home soon, for example you're in A&E, then you can book them in for TWAT clinic in two weeks and send them home with a leg bag. It's a little catheter bag which attaches to the leg by some velcro straps and they can walk around with it and empty out the bag themselves. It's usually a good idea to send them home with two weeks of tamsulosin as well which can help relax the muscles and increase the chance of a successful TWAT later. Now the exception to all of this is if the patient was in chronic retention because remember you cannot remove the catheter in chronic retention until the cause is dealt with. If the patient was in acute kidney injury when you first discovered that they were in retention then that's also a contraindication to sending them home with leg bag and twat clinic. But usually you can.